Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at the 20 games that just missed out on being in my top 100. And considering how many great games there are in the world, and only a very tiny percentage make the top 100, these games are so good. I feel bad that they were knocked out of the top 100, so I wanted to make a video about them. Here we go, from 120 to 101. First of all, we have number 120, David and Goliath, a great trick-taking game. Uh, in uh, this game, you are playing cards, there's six different suits of colors, and you're trying to get cards, but the scoring is interesting. If I have a green 12 and a green 13, that's 25 points, but if I get three of the same color, now they're only worth one point per card. That just comes together in a really good way. And then just the way that the, the, the whoever plays the highest card gets all the cards, except the person who played the lowest card gets the highest card. Works well, scales well, great game. Robo Rally is my 119. This game from Richard Garfield about programming robots and moving them around was just re-released last year, a special edition from Wizards of the Coast. Not very good quality, but still, this game is just so entertaining to me to program your robot and then see what happens on the board as all the robots move around. Lots of fun. Then we have at 118, Kingsburg. Kingsburg is a dice placement game in which you are going to be rolling dice and placing them on the board and getting resources. Uh, they're coming out with a new version of this this week and I'm really excited to see the new version because the expansion for Kingsburg is necessary and the new version is going to come with it built right in. But there's a lot of great games in this genre and I think Kingsburg is certainly one of my favorite and might even beat out another game I'm going to mention very soon. 117 is Zaya. Now, Zaya, and at this point of me recording this video, I still haven't played the expansion, although that's very close in the docket. I'm looking forward to trying it out. Uh, but Zaya is just the ultimate sandbox game. Do what you want. You have a spaceship, fly over here, be a pirate, deliver goods, um, just go out and discover things, go do research. You can do all that in this game. It's very open-ended, beautiful components, so much fun to play. Number 116 is another space game, Exodus Proxima Centauri. This is a shorter, faster version of Twilight uh, Imperium, which I do like a lot. I really like Twilight Imperium, but sometimes I'm not in the mood to play a long, epic game. Exodus Proxima Centauri gives me a shorter version of this as you sit there, produce resources, uh, expand, build your own custom ships. Just a lot of fun. Uh, then another space game for 115, Alien Frontiers. This is what I was talking about earlier with Kingsburg. These kind of flip-flop for me. They're very similar, both of them. You are placing dice out on the board in Alien Frontiers. The dice are your ships. What I like about Alien Frontiers is, is you get the faction upgrades where you each have your own special ability. I like that, but it, just some very thoughtful play, and it's essentially area control of different spots on Mars, and you do so with a really well-done game that's still holding up many years after it was produced. Uh, 114 is level 7 Omega Protocol. This is essentially XCOM. Uh, if you ever played XCOM, the computer game, where you go through a base with your Marines and try not to get blown up and stuff, I love that game. So much fun. But it's not been really replicated. Yes, there is an XCOM game, but that kind of takes a macro look at everything that's going on. Level 7 Omega Protocol gets up closer. You have some Marines, one player is the aliens. The alien player has a ton of cool options. You're feeding off the adrenaline and fear of the Marine players to do damage to them. Really great, fun game with beautiful miniatures, too. Uh, 113 is Seven Wonders Duel. Now, I like Seven Wonders a lot, but the two-player version, Duel, what an amazing game. The expansion, I'm kind of ambivalent on. I, I like it, but I don't think it's fantastic. I think it's just okay, but this basic Seven Wonders Duel, just back and forth as you're playing a tightrope game here and trying to have military win or maybe win through science. There's three ways to win the game, and you're trying to do well at all those ways. Just a lot of fun. Number 112 is Shadows Over Camelot. And Shadows Over Camelot is a cooperative game in which one person is the traitor. And even though they've made a gazillion cooperative games since Shadows Over Camelot, and many of them have traitors, Shadows Over Camelot still does a really good job, especially getting new people into the game. Uh, beautiful components, Days of Wonder, amazing production, highly recommend it. 
My number 111 is Cash and Guns. Now, Cash and Guns is a game where you're pointing guns at each other, which is something I wouldn't promote in real life, but in this game, it's silly fun. It's like the end of Reservoir Dogs or things like that, where everyone's like, who's pointing at who? And it's so silly and entertaining as you're splitting a bunch of money and you're always, you're not sure if there's an actual bullet in the gun or not. You have these cards that say whether it's fake or not. Really a lot of fun and it really scales to up to eight players, especially if you get the expansion. A lot of fun. Number one, 10 was very high on my list at certain times, and that's War of Indines, a two-player card game in which you are essentially doing Street Fighter or Virtual Fighter or whatever, you know, against each other in a, on a, in a card game format, and the fighters are so different. Whether you get War of Indines, uh, Devastation of Indines, whatever, Battlecon is the main name of the system. Really a lot of fun. That's my number 110. 109 is Power Grid. This auction game in which you are building power plants across a country, whether it's the United States or Germany in a base game, or whether you get one of the many expansions and using coal or, or uranium or uh, oil or, or a little trash or just, you know, power stations that are using green energy. It's really interesting because there's a bidding thing and it's very mathematical, numerical. And normally, I'm not as fan of being that you know, precise, but this game is just so entertaining. It's fun to watch your network grow. The economy of the goods that you're using to power your power stations are really well done. Just a fascinating game across the board. 108 is a game that just came out last year called Dice Forge. Oh, it came out this year, I'm sorry. Dice Forge is a build your own dice game. In this game, you have dice that look like Lego dice. You're popping the sides in and out of them and rolling them and getting resources. Very simple game. At the beginning of everyone's turn, you roll dice, get that stuff, and as, when it's your turn, you can buy new sides to your dice. A lot of fun, works with two, three, or four players. Highly recommend it. 107 is Too Many Bones. Now this game is complex and deep, and yet ex extremely fascinating. In Too Many Bones, players are going through a dungeon. It's like a dungeon crawl or adventure, I guess, not a dungeon. And you're using poker chips to move around and fight each other. But what makes the game fascinating is the tons and tons of customizable dice. Each character is extremely different. They come with their own set of dice. You're adding and subtracting dice to your dice pool, having special attacks. It's, like I said, there's a fairly deep game in here, but it is still a lot of fun. Then 106, Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. I would have said 3rd edition here, but the 4th edition is better, even if it does come across as kind of a 3.5. But TI4, if you want the full, complete, space epic in a box, that's Twilight Imperium. With 17 different races to pick from, um, all their own special abilities, all their own different technologies, a technology tree that's going to be different every game you play, politics, fighting, you name it. Is it long? Yes. Is it grandiose? Yes. And is it worth the length? The answer is yes. The only reason it's not my top 100 is I don't get a chance to play it as often as I would want to. Number 104 is Indulgence. This might be my favorite trick-taking game at the moment. This was just restored by Restoration Games, and it is a game in which you are playing cards and trying to uh, obey whatever the rule that's put in place that round. Each round someone's in charge, they put a rule, you mess up that rule, you pay them some coins. However, one person can choose to be the sinner and say, I'm going to totally blow this rule away, otherwise known as shooting the moon. And if they succeed, they get a lot of coins, otherwise they have to pay out. I love that concept. I like how the game changes. It feels like a good traditional trick-taking game with some other fun things added to it. 103 is Faces. Faces is a fantastic party game in which you are going to be dealing out a bunch of faces each turn and people are going to be, uh, or not faces, you put out something that says, name the person who probably just uh, rolled out of bed and then you put down a face. It's kind of like apples to apples with pictures. Now, the company that made faces, Buffalo, no longer makes it. I have my own custom version, which I think is really well done, but um, it's still just a lot of fun, faces. 102 is Vikings Gone Wild. This is a really fun deck building game in which you are working and building this deck uh, up of cards and trying to put things in front of you. For Vikings, you're getting uh, both uh, wood and beer and using that to, to get uh, more Vikings and fighting off monsters or attacking the other players. It doesn't really hurt the other players though. It just causes you to get more points, but they can defend against attacks, which causes them to get points. 
A lot of different options. The expansions let you go in different directions with this one. Highly recommend it. Vikings Gone Wild. And then finally, the game that just missed being in the top 100 is Small World. Small World is an amazing game. A game in which the world is too small and you have a bunch of different races. You are putting these races together, picking a, like a class like werewolves or skeletons or whatever, and then like happy werewolves or uh, hill goblins or whatever. You put them together and then you try to conquer as much as you can, getting points. Once they start doing not doing so well, you're like, all right, next race, and you move on. You let that race go into decline. This is a remake of an older game called Vinci, which I liked a lot, but Small World really trounces that game in every way. An amazingly great game. That's it. The games that almost made my top 100. So from me, thanks for watching. From the chainsaw guy behind me, we appreciate it. Until next time, this is Tom Bassel. Now go watch the top 100 and see the games that are even more amazing.